Next on You Bet, Matthew Kelly. Show. Well, you would not believe the week we've had. It's been an absolute nightmare. Monday, the electrics go skew with. Wednesday, the heating's up the spout. Then today, the whole studio became possessed by the High Lord of Chaos and Misery, the demon of Thrag from the dark world of Quarax. <laughs> oh, it's a weekend, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, the studio has been like a madhouse. If it's not a plumber getting in the way, it's an electrician or an exorcist. And you know what they like? Some of these guys are absolute cowboys, I can tell you. Never trust an exorcist called Tex. <laughs> he turns up, fag hanging out of his mouth, bum hanging out of his trousers. <laughs> right, mate, where's your demon, then? <laughs> He's not been here two minutes when he has to use the phone. He wanted tea every five minutes, and they've never got the right parts, have they? <laughs> Apparently, they don't make spirits like ours anymore, so he had to go back to the depot to get some special equipment. And that all goes on your bill, you know, plus the VAT. I tell you, ridding the studio of mythical demons is not a cheap business. Anyway, hopefully it's now gone and fingers crossed. I will conquer all that time. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's time to welcome four little devils. Seductive, flirtatious, sexy, but hey, that's enough about me. Please welcome <laughs> Louise Jameson. <laughs> It's a job, but someone's got to do it. TV presenter and a walker. <laughs> you grew up with him on Tiswells. You've spent Sundays with him on Surprise Surprise. We've flown him all the way from hospitality. Bob Carroll Jeeves. <laughs> Welcome back, Bob. Welcome to the show. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. Oops. Welcome, <laughs> how lovely. Sorry. What a joy. What are you sitting, sitting on, on there? On but, oh, thing behave like yourself, will you? <laughs> it's a joy to have you here. They say that the pen is mightier than the sword, but I wouldn't fancy my chances against our first challenger armed with only a ballpoint on guard. <laughs> 25-year-old Laurent Harper from Enfield is the British men's foil champion and he says he can hit all the hearts out of a pack of 52 playing cards displayed on a spinning wheel 1.5 metres in diameter with his foil in just 75 seconds. This is Bob's challenge. Why are you backing Laurent, Bob? Well, I've seen him in action with his weapon and the one thing... <laughs> The one thing about a foil is that each time he has to lunge, you actually have to lunge. Lunge. And he's, very, he's a very good lunger. Lunger. And he's definitely going to do this, guaranteed. Right, that's what we need for lunge, all right. Thank you very much, Bob. Anna. Well, I know he's British champion and everything, and he's probably got loads of records and whatever, but I was talking to Bob earlier, and I know that he's been on this show a few times, and he's always had a forfeit. <laughs> so I reckon, not because he's not going to do it, because he's not very good, but because Bob's going to get a forfeit, I'm going to say no. Melvin, I don't see the point of this. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we get them all out now? No, <laughs> you know, well, we're here. Um, yes, no, no, I don't think so. That's a no, is it? Yes. OK. No, I mean... <laughs> yes, it's a no. But just press, press any one button from two. <laughs> Thank I you did. very much. That's loud and clear. Louise? Well, just to foil Melvin... Oh. 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 You're sitting too close to him, it's catching. It's a bit infectious, yes. I'm going to say yes. Oh, He's nice gonna one. He's going to do it. Thank you very much, Louise. Two yeses, two noes. Let's see what the audience thinks. Place your bets now, please. And don't forget, this is your chance at home to chat amongst yourselves. Bring in the art of conversation. Just say yes or no to each other, OK? <laughs> right, well, it's uh, fairly split here. 53 say yes and 47 say no. So please welcome Lauren Harper. <laughs> Now, you come from a fencing family, don't you? Yeah, that's right. 
My brother, he's, um, he's my coach now. He um, went to uh, three Olympic Games uh, in um, Moscow, Los Angeles and Seoul. And he was uh, six times British champion. And he's retired now, he's like my coach. And so you've taken over the family tradition? That's right, yeah. And you're the, to, the yeah. current British champion? Yeah. Do, yeah. do you have ambitions to go to the Olympics? Yeah, I'm hoping to make um, the next Olympics in Atlanta and uh, in Sydney as well. well let's uh, talk about these... Uh, these uh, well, what are they? They're foils. There's three weapons. Yeah. There's foil, leopard and sabre. Mm -hmm. And this is a foil. Each uh, weapon's got a different target area. And uh, so each requires different tactics. So, like, for example, foil, the target's a trunk of the body, yeah. so you have to hit with a point. And uh, sabres of the other weapon, that's the target's the waist upwards, and you have to hit with a flat of the blade. Yeah. And, uh, yes. <laughs> and that's, uh, that plays the whole, um, the whole body's a target, so it's a lot, you know, a lot slower. And you're using the foil, this. are you? Uh, yeah, right. that's right. Now, talking of uh, the lunges and things, uh, would you care to demonstrate how, yeah, you, sure. how you do this? You should always wear a mask when you're... You should always wear a mask. You won't be wearing a mask in the challenge, will no, you? No. OK. If you're practising, you should always wear one. Right, I shall put one on and you can demonstrate on me, right? Oh! <laughs> oh, I can... I can tell you've done a lot of practice. It's a bit whiffy, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Be Very gentle sweet. with me. On. OK, then you stand with your front foot pointing forwards. Yeah. Back foot pointing that way, where somewhere. And what's it, what does this thing this, do? This back arm is, like, in films, it looks a bit fancy and whatever, but it's for balance. It's actually for balance. Oh, it's not yeah. just for wafting about, then? No. <laughs> <laughs> so when you do a lunge, it's for, like, an extra bit of propulsion, right, if you like. So when you do a lunge, you have to bend your legs, and you start with your arm first, right, and then you push back with this arm, and your leg kicks out, like that. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was worth a gold medal, So, uh, anyway, now about this challenge. Now, this, this wheel will be spinning around, and you've got to get all the cards in order. You've only got yeah. 75 seconds. Now, uh, it'll be physically demanding. Yeah, it's, it's uh, tough on your heart and lungs, yeah. Yeah. And what yeah, about your eyesight? Well, it'll probably be blurred after, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you can see them as they go around, can you? Yeah, you? yeah. Yeah, I can see them. OK, Just well, about. I wish you a lot of luck. Cheers. Cracking challenge. Take your place, ladies and gentlemen, right. Laurent Harper. OK, Lauren, you happy? Yep. Good luck. You have 75 seconds. Your time will start when you make your first lunge. In your own time, go. This time, no forfeit. For I'm long. amazed. I'm just amazed. I mean, what a speed you were going there. Just um, there's a you bet uh, thingy and uh, a wonderful what's it for your thingy. That you, <laughs> that you'll be able to sell and get a really yeah. good price and maybe get to the Olympics with that. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Carroll G is challenger and the next Cheers. Olympic champion, Lauren Harper. <laughs> The day is yours, Bob. I mean, I said, I said third time lucky to you, but how many times have you done? How, how many times have you done this now? Uh, with you, I think this is my third, but I've done it a couple of times before. And have you? And have you done a forfeit every single time? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we love you doing forfeits. Don't ask me why, Anna. 
You said no, I'm sorry. I did, because no I thought he'd get a forfeit. He's on a winning streak now. <laughs> Melvin, you said uh, no. I don't know whether you're aware that you said no, but... No, I think I meant to say yes. <laughs> yes. I think no. No. Louise, you said yes. You're quite right, too, and you get 53 <laughs> points as well. And 53 of our audience were right, and those 53 points will be added to the others at the end of the show. The points get turned into pounds and donated to charity. That's the end of the road for part one. Join us in part two. So I'll see you then. Ta-da. <laughs>
Yes, I, I'm, I'm going to have to bring this up. It's the, it's the arm action. I love that <laughs> thing you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's an extraordinary technique, isn't it, the way you do it? Do you learn literally from... No, but, yeah. I don't realise that I'm doing this this, this, way, this way at all. Because usually this is the first time I've seen myself in the camera. <laughs> I don't realise that I'm doing it. You'll never do it again, will you? <laughs> no, it's just it's just the way I do it. Like, and I don't realise that I'm doing it this way at all. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great job, ladies and gentlemen. Anna Walker's challenger, Christine Mullins. No forfeit, and you're quite right to back the challenge. You get 66 points as well. And you get 66 points too, Melvin, even though you didn't understand a word of what was going on. <laughs> Louise, you go up to 119. This puts you in a very strong position. You are winning so far, but the night is young. Bob? I was impressed. Yes, good. <laughs> Still doesn't get you any points. OK, you stay on 53. And 66 of our audience were right. TV challenge show in end of part two shock. Part three, expected imminently. See you then, Trough. A video wall, an amazing piece of TV technology which allows us to show you a giant picture made up of separate monitors all linked together. Oh dear, become a split personality. <laughs> now, this was a video wall. As you can see, it's been broken down into separate monitors. Reassembling them is a task before our next challengers. Neil Higgins and his team of seven construct video walls for pop concerts and TV programmes, and they say that they can reconstruct this 5x5 five five video wall in three minutes. The team will be broken down into four builders, two cable bashers and two foremen. The 25 monitors must be put together like a jigsaw so that my live picture is put together in the right order. And I don't want my nose upside down. Thank you. <laughs> this is Melvin's challenge. Why are you back in the team, Melvin? I think they're definitely going to do it because so far I haven't been too successful this evening and um, I've been making a lot of mistakes and things and I just... Don't like upset to... yourself, and Melvin. I... It's only it's a... It's nice story. to be here, Huey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Melvin. Press your yes button. Uh, Louise. No way. No way. You're going to end up looking like a Picasso painting. You're going to have your nose here and your ear <laughs> there. Just wait. I'm going to... Sorry. No. OK. You go with no. Bob, what do you say? I think you're good at a Picasso painting, but I don't think they can because I know for a fact they haven't got a licence. And... <laughs> <laughs> so, to me, that's a no-no. Fair enough. Anna. Um, well... I reckon the best thing about this, actually, is that you're going to end up with your very own Matthew Tally, aren't you? <laughs> Matthew Tally! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a play of words, that, isn't it, really, Anna? <laughs> but if only you were a bit shorter, they could probably do it quicker, couldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> but I reckon, I reckon they're going to do it, yeah. Lovely. Thank you very much, Anna. Two yeses, two noes. Let's see what the audience think. Place your bets now, please. I know it's a lot to do in the time. We shall be finding out shortly how long it would normally take them to build a wall of this size. Oh, but there's a lot of confidence here, you see. Now, the audience say 80 say yes and 20 say no. Please meet Neil Higgins and the Video Wall Crew. <laughs> Hi, Neil. OK, Neil, uh, tell me who the team are and what they do on the challenge. <clears throat> OK, I've got uh, Cliff with me. He's calling the monitors to be put up. I've got... Uh, Danny and Paul, there'll be cable bashing at the back. Right. And Richard, Paul, Lawrence and Paul will be, uh, hopefully, putting them up in the right place. Right, and cable bashers are just people who just uh, whisk the cables around. Yes, indeed, yeah. Right, now, this is really like a jigsaw, is it? Is it as simple as being a jigsaw? Um, it's a bit more complicated because, obviously, you'll be moving around. Uh, so it's difficult, the pieces will be variable, they will change. I see. Well, hopefully you won't be moving around too much. I'm not going to move around <laughs> too much, believe me. What's the usual time that it would take you to put a wall up like this? From unloading it on a truck to putting it up and colour balancing and make sure it's all correct, a couple of hours. A couple of hours? Yes. And you're going to do it in three minutes? Hopefully. Right. <laughs> uh, just one thing I want to ask. What's the... Uh, you know this thing about the roadies image? Is that all true? Um, yes. <laughs> Lots of luck with the challenge. I think you're good, you're good people to work with, I'll tell you that. Anyway, well, we'll find out after the challenge anyway. Take your places. <laughs> uh, 
OK, could we have a completely gorgeous image, please? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I lied. <laughs> you ready for this, Neil? Just about. Good luck. Yeah. You have three minutes. Your time starts now. Bottom one. Uh, middle break. Brilliant. I knew you could do it. I mean, because, I mean, so far I've been so right tonight. Everything I've done. <laughs> right, so you're and, and this, um... Oh, this. yes. I'll pass that on to Cliff. Because everybody gets a You Bet medal. Well deserved tonight, because you not only get a trophy, a medal each, you get to keep your jobs. Melvin Hayes challenges the video wall crew! Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Yes. I think, Melvin. Yes. I think it's safe to say you're finally getting the hang of this now, aren't yes. you? Really? They were great. They were great, and you get 146 now. That's what you go up to. And Louise, you said no. I'm sorry about this. Nobody's early days. You stay at 190. <laughs> Have I lost the lead now? Well, it's no. You've lost the lead, but not for long. Maybe. Who knows? Bob, you said no as well. You stay on 53. Well, you might as well because you <laughs> usually do. <laughs> and, uh, you said yes. So you got to 146 as well. You're in the lead with Melvin. And 80 of our audience was right. That's a goodly amount as well. Now, last week, Pat Sharp's Frisbee challengers went a bit oops with the hoops. So Pat was transformed into Spider-Man. Oh, talk about rummaging around. Ah, that last show has really brought the green out in London, I think, hasn't it? Pat, I'd like to introduce you to Dave. He is the head keeper of the Invertebrate House. How do you do, Dave? Here at London. So... Oh. No, <laughs> you, you are just taking the pith helmet. Is it precaution? 
You've got to give me a hand because I've got to clean out young Tracy here. Oh, oh, no. Keep your hands still, she's very delicate. Oh my goodness. Go. Oh dear, I can't believe this. <laughs> I'm so glad you've seen one at home. <laughs> you get these at home? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> So what, what is this this one then? She's a red knee bird eating spider from Mexico. Oh, it doesn't look like that to me. It looks like a you know, a yeah, tarantula. Yeah, that's, right. that's, that's the word. That's yeah. not, not their proper name. They're yeah. not as nasty as that. One. Sometimes they're called human eating as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got something else that I need to do. Oh, good. That you can do for me. It's this uh, giant millipede here. <laughs> you can hold on to her. Just count her legs for me. <laughs> you better do because. It did have a bit of a limp, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that on the interesting pile, yeah. I'm not... Okay. We'll never go, go on. Go on. You just hold your hand out and that will just find its way onto you. You're wearing all the... Oh, clothes. spooky! <laughs> so, I must just ask you before I go, have you got any spiders running around here willy-nilly, free of charge? Well, we don't normally have any loose, but there was that one that got out the other day. Oh, right. I think I found it. <laughs> Now, you don't want to believe everything you read in the papers. Matthew Kelly ate my hamster, says Martian from South Pole. <laughs> Fact or fiction are the subject of our next challenge. Petty Officer Richard Patton is a first aid instructor at the Royal Naval Hospital in Gosport, but his medical skills will be of no use to him tonight. Richard says that he can accurately calculate the total number of letters in a newspaper headline that he has never seen before by looking at it for three seconds. 20 members of staff of a local paper have each written a headline and one by one they will show their headline to Richard for three seconds and Richard will then tell us the exact number of letters in that headline. This is Louise's challenge. Louise, why are you backing Richard? Well, I just believe him when he says it, you know. He's a really honest... Some people have a sense of direction and some people can memorise logarithms and I can do neither. But he... I'm sure that he can do it. I just trust this man implicitly. I'm voting yes. I hope you're right. Bob, people that do these sorts of mental juggling things always fascinate me. I, it, it's something, again, I've never been able to do, but if he says he can do it, I believe that man. OK, thank you, Bob. Anna? Well, the only problem with that, this challenge, as I see it, is that tomorrow, when I'm reading the news, it'll probably be on my mind still, and I'll probably end up going... And these are the headlines. 36, 52, 24. <laughs> <laughs> we just see it. We just see it. I'll probably end up, you know, working in bingo after this programme. It could be obsessive, couldn't it? <laughs> um, but I'm going to go for it, yes. You're going for a yes with that. Yeah. OK, thank you very much. Anna Melvin. I was just thinking those figures, the 36 bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, no, I, no, as a matter of fact, I mean, I, because I've been so successful this evening, I have every confidence this is man is going to make a complete, uh, you know, uh, he ain't going to do it. <laughs> no, I didn't think so. OK, press your no button. Let's see what the audience think. Place your bets now, please. Don't forget, he's only got three seconds to do this. I've just got a mental picture of Bob Carradine's mentally juggling. <laughs> it's an appalling <laughs> idea. OK, 54 say yes and 46 say no. So please welcome Richard Patton. <laughs> this all start? How did you find out you had this skill? Uh, well, it all started as a youngster when we used to go on long journeys and um, I used to have a personal challenge of adding up car registration numbers before I went past the car. Um, and then it progressed on to uh, billboards, you know, adding the numbers up, or sorry, the letters up before we actually drove past the billboard. Um, and it just progressed from there. So I'm doing it all the time, really. You do it all the time? Well, virtually all the time, yeah. When I'm not working, that is. As in, so Anna was right, it becomes obsessive, does it? It, it can be, yeah, yeah. So every time you pass a billboard, you mentally actually just... It just keeps the brain ticking over, yeah. Ticking over for what? I mean, what possible use could you have for this? No real use at all, really. Do <laughs> you think anybody could do this? I think anyone, yeah, anyone daft enough to do it could do it, yeah. <laughs> all right. Anybody who thinks they could do this challenge, just say yes. <laughs> I think you might be on your own tonight, Richard, actually. Um, actually, I'll tell you something about... Did you know the first British newspaper was uh, founded in 1665 and it was called the London Gazette? No, I never knew that. You didn't know? No. We was in all the papers. <laughs> um, the thing is, we're going to need uh, some headlines. 
So uh, we need uh, 20 members of the press uh, here. So uh, how do we get them on? Uh, I know. Uh, free bar and buffet. Here they come. OK, Richard, you'll have your three seconds. If you want to pass on any of them, then just tell me and you will get one more second to look at it and then that will be it, just to be fair. OK? OK, yeah. Put your glasses on. OK, could we have the first headline, please? 18. That's right. Next. 17. Correct. And the next one, please. 19. Well done. Next. 26. Well done. Next, please. 24. Correct. Next. 26. Well done. Next, please. 27. Well done. Next. 27. Correct. Next, please. 22. Good. And the next. 30. Well done. Next, please. 18. Good. Next. 21. Yes. Next, please. Good. 31. Well done. Next, please. 24. Good. Next. 25. Correct. Next, please. 23. Well done. Next, please. 17. Correct. Next one, please. 22. Yes. The penultimate one, please. <sighs> Good one. 12. And the last one, please. 27. Yes. Well done! <laughs> I don't have to bungee jump. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fantastic feat, and uh, I hope you're all trying it at home as well. <laughs> I'd like to thank the ladies and gentlemen of the press and Louise Jameson's challenger, the fabulous Richard Patton! <laughs> well done. Surprised you back, Richard then, Louise. Excellent. Well done. You get some points as well. You got to 173. You, Bob, you were right. Bob gets some more points. Oh, bless him. He goes up to 107. Abby, yes, you were quite right as well. You got to 200. That puts you seriously in the lead now. And uh, Melvin, you said no, you stay on 146. But still time, though, and 54 of our audience were right. <laughs> And welcome to Norway. This is Lillehammer, venue for the 1994 Winter Olympics. Heinze, Atlib, Tomba, they will all be sorry when Jean Claude Massiquet beats them at their own game. <laughs> <laughs> the challenge Jez Avery from Sunderland 
is an expert mountain bike rider. As a matter of fact, you might remember him from Ubet a couple of years ago when his challenge was on the flat of the Ubet studio floor. Today, his challenge is on the piste, on the ladies' Olympic downhill piste at Hafgel, to be precise. Now, Jez has been watching these daring downhill racers in action and he reckons he can beat them at their own game. He says that he'll ride his mountain bike down 1,000 metres of this Olympic run faster than a top skier. Now, his opponent for this challenge will be a member of the Norwegian national team and he's one of the top 15 skiers in the country, Rune Ostby. That's the challenge. Now meet the challengers. What a good thing you came to me. Welcome to you, Bet Rune. Thank you. Excellent. Jez, welcome back. Hello again. Well, this is a mountain. That's a mountain bike. You should be doing this kind of thing all the time, do you? No, not really. I usually do it in the summertime when it's nice and warm. Uh, so have you done anything similar to this challenge, though? Yes, I do dual slalom, which is on grass, mm -hmm. but it's only half the time and only about 20 miles an hour. So, oh, so this is a bit hairy for you? Just a little bit, well, yeah. What kind of speed will you get up to on this? Uh, we haven't got a speedo, but personally, the speed of the wind going past you, I reckon it's at least 50 miles an hour. Wow. Have you made any uh, special alterations to your bike to cope with the snow and ice? Yes, just the chain ring. It's bigger than normal, so it can pedal that a little bit faster yeah. before the hill. Oh, and what about the conditions here at Hafjell? The snow is as best as it's going to be, but there is a wind coming up mountain, which is slowing me down. Yeah. Which is going to keep your grip, are you? I hope so. Keep a grip, Jess. Keep a grip. Bruna. Yeah. Well, this is the ladies' downhill. I mean, come on, this should be easy for you. Any problems? I think it's uh, going to be quite difficult. Why? <laughs> no, it's a steep and flat and steep and flat. So, um... Is it the flat that's a problem? Because you're starting here yeah. on, on the flat. Yeah. So will that be difficult to pick up speed? Yes, against him, I think. All right. Well, that's why you've got to get him, Jez. I hope so. Well, normally, I would say break a leg. But on this occasion, I'd say both of you, good luck. The question is, will Jez conquer the mountain before Runa does? It's up to you to decide. <laughs> Indeed it is, because this is my challenge. Bob, can Jez do it? So if he fails, does that mean you get a forfeit? I might do. What's it to you? Uh, <laughs> well, I can't imagine a bike beating a skier down the mountain. So I'm going to say no. I just can't see it being done. OK, all right, fair. You just want to see me do a forfeit, don't yes. you? Yes, thank you. All right. Anna? Well, being a skier, and also I went out to the Oli Winter Olympics and I've seen these guys and the women on the downhill, and they're brilliant. I can't imagine that anyone on a bike is going to be able to beat them. I'm going to back the skier and say no. Oh, this is looking very hopeful, isn't it? Thank you, Anna. Um, Melvin, what do you think? I want to see you do a forfeit. <laughs> <laughs> no. Thank you so much, Melvin. Uh, Louise. Well, of course he's going to do it. Of course he has to. I mean, it's such a brave thing to put yourself up for, it is isn't incredible. it? I'm going yes. I yes, think we you're can quite do it. right, Louise, as well. Yeah. Okay, three no's, one yes. Let's see what the audience thinks. Place your bets now, please. <laughs> Now, if you back Jez, then you're backing me. But if you back Luna, you're backing a possible forfeit, which is even more of a worry. Oh, what? Oh, that's... I think that's about the meanest vote I've ever seen. <laughs> All right, then. 26 say yes and 74 say no. I hope the 74 are wrong. You'll be sorry. So let's go back to Norway for the contest between Jez and Runa. I wonder who'll reach the bottom sooner. Ha <laughs> ha.
50.12, and that's the time Jez has to beat. You can do it, Jez, for me, please. Five, four, three, two, one, go! You are either extremely brave or extremely foolhardy. Which is it? Both, I think. When you've watched it now, how yeah. did you feel about what you were doing? Uh, it, it honestly looks slower on TV compared to what it was like. And that last... You mean it looks slower there? Yeah. Ah! The, la the last five seconds where I come over the crest of the hill, it just felt like somebody they give, us a, give us a kick up the backside. The acceleration down that last bit. And what, and what does that do to you? It gives us more incentive to ride my bike better and hopefully... More incentive? Yeah. So, like, just to be better at the sport, because I'm sure I've got a few more years left in as yet. So it wasn't a bravery, it was stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very, very proud much. of my challenger, Jez Avery. Thank you. No, you must all have known something I didn't know at the time. You said no, but uh, you get some points as well for saying no, actually, Bob. Yep. You go up to 181. This is going to look very good at the end. Anna, you said no, so you go up to 274 now. I think this might put you seriously in the lead because, Melvin, you said no and you go up to 220. You said yes, Louise, so you stay 173. And as this means that you are this week's winner. I'll be right back to you about that. And 74 of our audience were right. So let's add those 74 to all the other points from the evening. That gives us an audience total of 327. Let's add our celebrities' points together. That gives us a celebrity total of 848. Let's Add the celebrity total to the audience total. That gives us a grand total of 1,175. The points will be turned into pounds and donated to charity. So let's quadruple it to get a decent figure for charity. And we have a grand total of 4,700 pounds. <laughs> and that will be donated to a charity nominated by this week's celebrity winner, who was, of course, Anna Walker. Anna, who would you like your money to go to? I'd like it to go to a charity that does loads of work for underprivileged and handicapped children. They not only take them on trips away, give the families a break, but they also organise big events, entertainments for them. And I'd like to do just a little bit to help them. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you. <laughs> and sadly, that's all we've got time for on the show tonight. Uh, Matthew, Will Matthew, excuse me. Yes. Give me one second. Uh, do, do, I think I was correct in that. Uh, didn't you have um, a bit of a forfeit because he didn't? Get... <laughs> 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 yes, of course. I, uh, I hadn't forgotten. I was, <laughs> I was with Jez in Norway. I knew I had to do a forfeit, and all I will say is this. It's very bad news to back a challenge that fails in a location with such horrendous forfeit potential. <laughs> Watch this. Well, Bob said that in the of Norway, and this is Jory. He is the pilot of the Bob said. Hello, Jory. Hello. How long is this track? It's uh, 1,360 uh, metres. And how long will it take to complete it? Yeah, about uh, 58 seconds, I believe. That could be the longest 58 seconds of my life. Right? <laughs> what speeds will we get up to? About uh, 117, 18. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Have you got 
Got any advice for me? Yes, I have. Yeah, uh, you have to sit. Uh, I'm in number two, am yeah. I? Just in here, is it? Yes. And you'll be right ahead of me, will you? Okay. Yeah, I have to. I wasn't built for this kind of thing, you know. <laughs> I was built more for comfort than for speed. Oh. Oh. Oh, it is cosy. Hello, boys. Hello. 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 Lovely. What happens if it turns over? You just hold on, and we come to the bottom anyway. <laughs> Lovely. Yes, good luck. Good luck, folks. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. OK, yes. Well, this is it, really, isn't it? Well, it's too late to go back, isn't it? Oh. Well, was that a forfeit or what? I would uh, like to thank the Norwegian national bobsled team for that experience. I think thanks is the word I'm looking for there. <laughs> it was an amazing experience, but that is all we've got time for on the show tonight. Will you please thank my guests? They were Bob Carroll G's, Anna Walker, Melvin Hayes and Louise Jameson! <laughs> and let us not forget the most important people, ladies and gentlemen, the challengers! Join us, thanks, good night.